I can't pass up a good picture frame. Recently, when I went to my local transfer station where we have a free area, there was a ton of these picture frames. Even though I have a bunch of them down in my craft room, in storage, in my stash, uh, I still pick them up because I just can't pass them up. I mean, this is just too yummy of a picture frame. I mean, like, it's just gotta happen. So I picked this one up and I thought that I would do some kind of a multimedia thing with it. I had a vision of doing something with it. So uh, similar to the little piece of wood that I had and I put the crow on it and the um, use the, the clay mold on top of the crow and the background was music notes. So I think we're gonna build on that. I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we're gonna work on some multimedia decor. Making over, reusing, and upcycling these dump finds have been the most fun that I've had recently. Just going and finding really cool treasures at the dump, at the free area, and just making them over. It's been accepted really well into my booth. I'm selling a lot of those things that I have redone, and I think people appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, maybe I'm taking something older and doing a little something newer, fresher with it in my own style. So I have this striped material that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you could find it on Amazon uh, or Joann's while they're still open. Uh, and so I'm just covering up the cardboard on this. I was going to use the glass but uh, doing the multimedia, I'm going to have several layers on here, and I don't think it's going to fit in behind that glass. So we're going to have to just forego the glass. It was really nasty dirty anyway, so we're just going to use the cardboard and build on that. So I just wrapped it in the striped material. I secured it with hot glue in the back, and now I'm taking some music notes paper, and I used the glass to... Just kind of rip down the size that I wanted over my material. I made sure that I ripped it down a little bit smaller and I didn't care if I had big chunks here and there. That way it would show the material through the sides. I took some antique wax and went around the edges to just kind of make those look a little more aged. Just give it a more vintage look. As you can see here, I put it on and you can see where you the material shows around the edges and I now am going to take one of my wooden crows from 24 hour crafts I buy these like in bulk because I love using them and they sell really well in my booth people love crows in our area I grabbed that painting that all black and then I will sand him down like, just around the edges and just bringing back some of that raw wood so when I add the antique wax to it to give it a richer feel uh, it will darken those edges and just make it look really nice and old. I grabbed a flower mold that I've had in my stash for a while, so I don't remember where I got it. I added some cornstarch to one of the flowers that I wanted to add my clay to. And I'm going to do this little flower and a couple of the leaves that go with it to put on the top of my crow. If you haven't seen one of my previous videos that I added, I added the lock and key, which I really, really love, to the top of my crow. This time I thought I'd go with the flower theme. So I'm going to paint this black as well because it's going to sit on top of my crow. And then I will add some rub and buff to make those details pop. I'm going to add to my paper that I have here and add some drop cloth to it just on the corner of it. I want to add some stamps that I just got so I thought I would add this so that they would really show up well. So I just did it like a kitty corner and as you can see here and 
I'm going to use these stamps. I've partnered with the scrapbook shop and picked up a few stamps and papers that I think will really work well on this multimedia piece. So I will have the link to their shop down in the description, my affiliate link, and also I will have a coupon code that you can use, and I'll have that linked down there as well. I thought these tall flowers would look great on this multimedia piece, so I'm going to use these. Plus, I ordered an actual stamp pad. Some of you are going to be very proud of me for that. Instead of using paint, I know that you will. Uh, so this is pure palette, and it's a great little stamp pad, actually. It's, it's very nice and dark, and I really like how it works on this material. It worked very well. Uh, I just had to make sure the very first one that I stamped, when I put the ink on, it uh, went on the corners of my stamp and it stamped on the material the same way and got the little corners, which you want to make sure you wipe those off. You, you could see when I show it to you, I got a lot of ink on that because this is the very first time using that stamp pad. So I... Uh, just got a little bit on the corners there and so see I can show you uh, I had to be very careful and wipe those off whenever I use that stamp pad and I wanted to just lightly gently put the ink on and then wipe it back so that's why my fingers are all nasty dirty <laughs> among other things you know just just painting in general I get so messy but it's therapeutic so I don't really mind it so I just went all over the bottom and I have the crow there as just kind of so I can tell where I'm going to place him and I just want to get an idea of what I want to put where on with these flowers and so I just kind of randomly grab them and place them on and I try to keep it uh, above the where my frame is going to go and I'm also going to be putting some Spanish moss down at the bottom. So you're not going to be able to see that bottom part where the stems are anyway. But I just wanted to make sure that they were up high enough so you could see them really well. So as you can see here, I finished putting my stamps on. came out really well. And I like those tall flowers. So you can uh, add to them and make them really tall or whatever you'd like to do. So I thought that came out really nice. So now I'm just adding some wood glue and hot glue to my crow, and I'm gonna add him on top of my little flowers. And I'm gonna stay away from the edges again so that I can add my picture frame and it doesn't get stuck on that wood. Now I'm going to add my, my clay flower, and I painted those black, and I put wood glue and hot glue on there so that I can continue on with my project. That hot glue is going to hold that on there so that I can continue right away and don't have to wait for the wood glue to dry, which it doesn't take long. But just touched up a little bit with the black uh, as I was touching it. It just kind of, some of the paint came off, so I was just touching that up. And now I'm just going to make a messy bow. And this is just scraps that I have that I think are going to look good on the picture. So I'm just cutting them into a particular size that I want and just stacking them on top of each other. And I'm even throwing in some of that twine that I have there. And I'm just going to tie that up and add that to my, my picture. I found the big rusty star in my stash so I added that to the top of my bow and then I took my rub and buff this is antique gold and I'm just taking it on my finger and rubbing it over the top of the flower and leaves to bring out some of the detail I think that makes my bird pop and the flower that's on top I also added as you can see a little bit around the edges just just, you know, giving little little drops of the gold around it to make it all blend in together. So also from the scrapbook shop, I got these beautiful papers. These are going to be great for backgrounds and little uh, maybe signs that you want to stamp things on. 
Um, I think they're going to add a lot to multimedia. I love the the lacy edges on them, the soft flowers on them. I thought they were beautiful. So I picked these up as well to show you guys so that maybe you could get an idea of what they have. Whether you scrapbook or whether you do uh, upcycles or makeovers, I think these are going to work for everything. Now these I really wanted for this piece. These are just lacy little pieces of paper. I mean, beautiful. Great little... Uh, layers that you can add to your your pieces whether again be scrapbooking or whatever you decide to use them on so I picked these up because I just thought they were gorgeous such detail in them and there's different colors in this pack so this is a second pack it doesn't go with the flowery pack that I just showed you but I picked these up as well because this one I really wanted to use with my crow and I really should have put this down before I added my crow, but I kind of forgot that I had them. Um, <laughs> I, I had so many layers to this that, you know, I just forgot, like, as I was doing it, I'm like, oh, shoot, I wanted to do that. But it's okay. I'm going to cut it down and add it where I want it. It would have been better to add it before I put my crow, but, you know, you, you just go with it. So I just cut it, like, in a little... Uh, triangle piece and put it above my crow there as you can see and a little bit up in the corner just trying to add layers and different textures to my piece and I'm showing you here I got these flowers from Hobby Lobby they're a beautiful neutral uh, beigey light beige color so I'm adding these as well this is going to be a nice soft multimedia piece I really love how this came out so I added those along with my Spanish moss, glued my picture in, and I think it's finished. My friend Judy is selling some stacks of wood that she has put together for people to do craft projects with and I thought that I would get some of those from her and make some risers. I like to use them in my booth and they also sell very well in my booth so I like to pick up little things that I can use and I thought these would be perfect to add little feet to. Uh, do a little design on and put these in my booth to sell. So I am just uh, sanding it down just a little bit to get rid of any burrs or any you know pieces of, of wood that may be sticking up. I call these little tool packs that I have jewelry boxes and I was going through my jewelry box to find the right size drill bit that I needed to use to put in my little feet that I have. I got a big a plastic container full of these little weird pieces. I don't know what they are, but they make great feet for my riser. So I've just been working out of that. And so I just drilled down and adding my feet, just checking to see the depth to make sure they're the right depth. I added a piece of tape so that I knew how far down that I wanted to go. And then I went just a little bit further than that as well. But I, I, uh, put the holes in the corners and then I am wood gluing those little feet down in there and it works just so perfectly. I just love how this comes out. Um, these little, I mean, you can make feet out of just about anything that you find. And I've used door knobs, uh, the little, the little wooden ones. Uh, I just love these and I don't know once I run out of them, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I really love using them a lot. So I'm just making sure that they're all in seated nicely and then I flip it over and I kind of tap the top to make sure it doesn't rock or anything like that. It's all in there really nicely. So now I'm just going to take some of my antique wax. I have two bundles of these just so we can clarify. 
Uh, so you're going to see these I use antique wax on. I darken them up a little bit because I don't like the lightness of it. So I wanted to darken them. So I brush on my antique wax and wipe it back. My other stack that I have, I used my hemp oil and oiled the top so that it was a nice dark finish on that as well. So you're going to see these that I forgot to get an ending picture of, but you'll kind of see how they come out anyway. But uh, then I took my stamp and added some black paint to it. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this IOD crockery stamp. Just took little pieces of that and stamped it on the front. Or if you don't want that stamp on there, you can flip it around and just have it plain. But I thought I would do a little bit of both. So that's the second stack right there. And these are the finished little pieces. This was a quick little project and I love using risers in my decor. So we're going from scrap wood to another dump find. I got this at the free shack at my dump and it's a beautiful basket, a beautiful picnic basket. The inside isn't so beautiful. As you can see, the fabric is stained and dirty. And I thought, well, if I could remove it and wash it, then that would be great. But it was in there with like this plastic I don't know what it was, just something that was holding them on. So I cut that out and I just ripped them off and figured I would do my own thing with them. So it was raining the day that I decided I wanted to spray paint this. I've always wanted to spray paint one of these baskets black and then distress it back. So guess what? This one's getting that today. So I'm taking my Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint spraying the whole outside of the basket. Once it was dry, I brought it in and sanded it down so that it looked a little more distressed. And then I sealed it with some clear Rust-Oleum paint. So I'm gonna put fabric back in. I'm gonna use my, my favorite material, my black and tan. I use this for just about everything. What I do is I hot glue up under the lip and then I add the top of my fabric. So when I flip this back down into the basket, it will have a nice edge on it and not a frayed edge. So that's why I do it this way. So I start with my fabric on the outside and I glue it in on the edge here that I'm showing you. And I just move it around and glue around all the edges. And when I get to the very final part, where I come around to where I started. I just go a little bit beyond that and I fold my fabric over so again, I don't have the frayed edges. And it works so well and it's so easy that uh, I just absolutely love doing this with my baskets. And I think it adds a nice touch and another level to the baskets so that you, um, you know, when you go to sell them or even keep them to use, it just makes it look so much nicer and more finished. So here I'm showing you, I just flip it right back in. I have really a lot of excess material inside. I usually like to cut it down, but I just use this piece that I had extra and I just left it. And I'll go back and trim that and rip it all the way around uh, so that the bottom isn't so messy. It's a little bit, it does cover the bottom, but uh, it, it's just not so, so messy on the bottom there. So now the top, I'm just folding it in and just adding my material there we go just like that just trying to get some nice edges on those corners i'm cutting off a little bit of the extra not too much because i want to make sure that i can still fold it over and get the nice edge around the inside but i do that all the way around and get a nice top on that
This tart pan is another dump find that I got, and I'm going to use that and a piece of calendar that I got from the Dollar Tree calendars. I picked out this one that says B U. I love the B in it and the yellow flowers that are on there. I guess they're little daisies. So I cut that all out and I'm just showing you which calendar it is because I know they have a few different ones. It's from this year, so it's a 2024 calendar. You may still be able to pick these up at Dollar Tree, I'm not sure. And it says farm life on the front with the cute little cow. I want to do something with that too, uh, but he was a little bit too big for this tarp pan. So we're going to use the B. So I cut it out in, I used the circle, the bottom of the pan, and cut out what I wanted to keep. And now I'm going to add that little picture with some Mod Podge to the bottom of my tarp pan. could just use regular stick glue and not Mod Podge, but I like using Mod Podge to stick my pieces down like this. So you use whatever that you have handy to do this with. So now I'm just trimming off the edges where I got it a little bit of excess off the edge. And now I'm taking my bottom piece that had the little uh, Ivy and Black Eyed Susans. And I'm just adding those as another layer, just kind of more flowery to the picture. And I'm just Mod Podging those down as well. So it's just going to add a little extra flowery to it. I didn't want to lose those flowers because I thought they would look super on there. So I'm just adding all of them on and layering them on with uh, the Mod Podge. And it works out really well. I could have left the sides gray, but I wanted to do black. I want this to be a primitive piece, and I wanted to add some of my spice mix that I have, my grubby mix. So I wanted it, it had to be wet in some way. So I thought painting it black all the way on the inside and outside, and then while it was still damp, adding the grubby mix to it. This is just a mixture of spices that I use on my candles to make them look grubby. I thought I would use it on the edges of this metal pan. And then once it dried, I used my clear Rust-Oleum spray to spray that on and seal it in so that it wouldn't flake off. Now I'm taking my antique wax and going over the edges of my little picture to again, make it look aged and uh, just not so stark white. And then I am going to add that to my my little frame with some hot glue. I'm adding some twine rope around the edges. I actually go around it twice so there's a double layer and make sure that I cover up all those edges really nicely. I think this finishes off the edges uh, and so I don't have to worry about seeing any of the uneven cuts maybe that I used when I cut around the circle. And then I'm gonna embellish it with some pit berries down at the bottom with some Spanish moss. I also drill a couple holes in the very top and add a black and tan hanger to it just with my material. And so you'll see that at the end when you see the finished product. I 
I hope you liked my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite. I hope it inspired you to get started on working on some projects. Don't forget to check out the links below, the scrapbook shop, the really cool items that they have there. And it's not just for scrapbooking. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.